Good afternoon. My name is Joanna Lipp, and I'm one of the Cancer Center Dietitians. I'm going to discuss nutrition during chemotherapy with you today. In part one, we're going to discuss nutrient needs. I'm going to step away from the screen so that we can focus on the slides, and I will walk you through the information that we have today. Our objectives for today are to review nutrient needs during chemotherapy and recommendations to meet your nutrient needs during treatment. Please realize that these are general guidelines for individual recommendations based on your cancer site, treatment plan, medical history, and side effects, consult with your medical oncology team and or a registered dietitian. You can schedule a free nutrition consultation at the Pluta Integrative Oncology and Wellness location at the number located there, or at the Wilmot um, location at Strong Hospital at the number that's listed there. You can click here to access these presentation slides if you'd like to print them out or refer to them later. Different cancers have different nutrient needs. Patients with some types of cancers don't have a lot of trouble eating and can eat a low calorie, less processed foods diet without a problem and maintain good nutrition. These are generally people with breast cancer and prostate cancer and some patients with colon cancer. And that kind of diet is actually the diet that is most advantageous for those patients if they can actually tolerate that diet. Patients with other kinds of cancers have more trouble eating and being able to eat or digest healthy foods and may need an alternate approach. These are generally patients with head and neck cancer, esophageal cancer, stomach cancer, cancer of the small bowel or pancreas, some patients with hematologic cancers like leukemia and lymphoma, as well as patients with lung cancer and gynecological cancers such as ovarian cancer. So why is nutrition important? It's very important to maintain weight in order to maintain muscle mass. If you can keep your weight and your muscle mass up, you will likely experience fewer breaks in treatment, which will ultimately result in better treatment response. In addition, most people who are able to maintain their nutrition have less fatigue, feel better, and an appropriate diet can help reduce the risk of recurrence. We always prefer that people choose real food first. Select foods and drinks that are best tolerated during the treatments. If you can tolerate the healthy ones, those are honestly the best choice. You will need calories. Calories are energy. We have a tendency to think that too many calories is bad, but during cancer treatment, it is important to get enough calories. Your energy and your calories come from all sources carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. We need to get enough calories in to avoid unintentional weight loss due to difficult eating. Some treatments may actually increase calorie needs, and we try to balance our food intake between meals and snacks with the variety of different foods. It's usually helpful to try for four to six smaller meals per day and to make the most of every bite. It's also important to get enough fluids. For most people, the goal is two to three quarts of fluid a day. And you need fluids to protect your kidneys, prevent dehydration, keep your mouth moist, and thin out mucus. A few tips to get enough fluids are to sip fluids throughout the day. You may want to set yourself a goal with a certain number of cups or bottles of water um, or other drinks. Limit caffeine as that has a tendency to dehydrate you. You can certainly use a lot of different things to meet your fluid needs including flavored waters or infused waters 
or other things like broth, soup, smoothies, jello, popsicles, ice cream, sherbet, those all count as fluid sources. In addition, we need enough protein. Protein is a basic building block of every cell, and we need it for healing. In addition, we need it to help maintain our muscle mass. If we can, we like to focus on uh, protein sources that are less processed and not cured, in, including protein at all meals and snacks. Food sources of protein can be divided into animal and plant-based proteins. Animal proteins are meats such as beef, pork, and poultry, fish and seafood, eggs, and dairy products such as milk, yogurt, and cheese. Plant-based proteins are legumes, sometimes called lentil beans, um, also lentils. Um, in addition, soy sources such as tofu, soy milk, edamame, and nuts and seeds and things made from nuts and seeds such as peanut butter and almond butter. When choosing carbohydrates, we hope that you can select whole grains, less processed breads, pastas, and grains if you can tolerate them. We do recommend whole grain bread or pasta, brown rice, quinoa, farro, bulgur, and other whole grains if you can tolerate them, and suggest that you limit more refined or white flour or sugar unless you really need those calories and are having trouble tolerating the more whole grains. Examples of those are white bread and white pasta, cakes, cookies, pies, crackers, things of that sort. You also get carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables. We like to say eat a rainbow, and you can certainly use fruits and vegetables in many forms. You can have fresh fruit, frozen, canned, pureed, or juiced fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are low in calories, but generally high in nutrients. That's great for people who need to have lower calorie intake, but a lot of people need more calories and should add calories to their fruits and vegetables with higher fat or higher protein ingredients if you can. It's also important to get dietary fiber, which just does come from these carbohydrate sources. Fiber is divided, generally speaking, into two different types, soluble and insoluble. They do different things in your body, and both are important to include in your diet. Also, a lot of our foods that have uh, carbohydrates, such as our fruits and vegetables and whole grains, also have what we call phytonutrients. These are compounds that help to fight cancer by a variety of different mechanisms. In foods, they provide color and or flavor to foods. This list gives you a small sampling of some of the phytonutrients that are out there and some of the foods that they are in. Please just realize that, for example, lutein is in things besides kale and spinach. Those are just a few of the examples. Same thing goes for lycopene. Um, this chart says that they are in tomato-based products, but they are in other things as well, such as watermelon, cantaloupe. Uh, basically, a lot of these phytonutrients are in a variety of different fruits and vegetables, which is why we say eat a rainbow. People often ask, what about sugar? Does sugar feed cancer? This is a very difficult question because all of your body cells use a form of sugar called glucose, and the body makes this form of sugar from carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles and your liver. Uh, in essence, your body will keep your blood sugar at a particular level, and you cannot uh, deprive a tumor of sugar completely by limiting it in your diet. 
However, there may be a connection between elevated insulin levels and growth factors that um, can happen if you have a diet that has a lot of simple carbohydrates or sugars in it. These two things, insulin levels and growth factors, are really controlled more by exercise than diet. However, some tips to stabilize insulin levels are to try to limit the added sugars, such as candy, soda, baked goods, sweetened coffees, fruit juice, honey, maple syrup, all sorts of sugars. To choose the less processed, more whole grains if possible. And to pay attention to the portion size of your carbohydrate foods. Generally speaking, if you pair your carbohydrate food with some sort of protein or fat, you will help to stabilize the rise in insulin that happens when you eat that carbohydrate food. We also recommend that you spread carbohydrates throughout the day and that you engage in physical activity. There is a connection between the type of carbohydrate that you eat and how your blood sugar and insulin levels respond. On the left, we have a simple carbohydrate, let's say a cupcake. In the blue, you will see what happens to your blood sugar. In essence, it goes up pretty high pretty quickly. The red line is your insulin level, which generally speaking will go up to match that rise in blood sugar. If you eat a more complex or less processed carbohydrate, for example, whole grain oats, you have less of a rise in your blood sugar and less of a rise in your insulin level. So the type of carbohydrate that you eat can affect your insulin level. We have a demonstration that you can view online for something we call Anytime Bars. We've demonstrated this recipe. It is basically a simple homemade version of granola bars. We have a recipe online, but you can vary the ingredients in the recipe to suit your needs or what you have on hand at home. You also get calories from fats. Fats are a concentrated energy source. They help with absorption of fat-soluble fat vitamins and phytonutrients. And some of them are more heart healthy than others. Generally speaking, the less processed your fats are, the more heart healthy they are. And fats that come from nuts, seeds, olive oil, canola oil, avocados, and fatty fish such as salmon and tuna are really the best choices for fat. A good way to add calories in a smaller volume is to add more fats to your foods or to use them as condiments. So for example, you can uh, make a pesto out of olive oil. A lot of salad dressings are very high in oil. Nut butters, guacamole. Hummus can be made with tahini, which is sesame seed paste, which will add fat. Some people also add olive oil to their hummus. And those are good ways to add some extra calories. We're going to switch gears a little bit and touch on dietary supplements. Dietary supplements are individual nutrients or bioactive substances that are sold in pill and powder forms. These are not regulated by the FDA. That means that any manufacturer can put whatever they want in that bottle, put a label on it, and put it on the store shelf or put it on the internet and sell it to you. And nobody is really paying attention to what's in there. Therefore, we can't guarantee that these are actually what they say on the label. And we can't guarantee that there's any evidence that the supplements are actually effective at doing what they claim to do because most manufacturers 
really don't do any testing on their products. There are potential adverse side effects with supplements. A lot of people tend to think that because they're natural compounds that they're safe, but that is not necessarily the case. Some interactions with chemotherapy are, for example, green tea interacts with Velcade, and compounds in St. John's wort interact actually with quite a few chemotherapies. So it's very important to limit how many dietary supplements you take and to make sure your oncology team is aware of which ones you are taking. It is very important to discuss the risks versus benefits with your oncology team and your oncology dietitian or your oncology pharmacist can actually be very helpful with that. We encourage people to follow good food safety guidelines. This includes washing hands and utensils, thoroughly washing any fresh produce, keeping raw meats and fish separate from produce. If you're cutting up both meat and produce, you might want to use separate cutting boards and separate knives so that you don't cross-contaminate. You want your hot foods to be served hot and eaten hot and cold foods to stay cold. You want to limit exposure of foods in what we call the danger zone, which is where bacteria can grow. Thaw foods in the refrigerator or in the microwave, not in the sink or on the countertop. Avoid uncooked or raw or undercooked uh, meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and dairy. This translates to avoiding rare steak, raw sushi, and runny egg yolks that you might find with something like a poached egg. You also don't want to consume raw or unpasteurized milk or other dairy products. You want to cook meat, fish, poultry, eggs, and casseroles to a safe temperature. And you might want to actually have a thermometer at home to check the temperature of your meats. Leftovers should be refrigerated quickly, not left out for hours and should be eaten within several days. If you don't think you're going to eat it in several days, you may prefer to freeze it and it will keep longer in the freezer. And a good rule of thumb is when in doubt, throw it out. You probably want to avoid salad bars and buffets because uh, you never know what people are touching. And you definitely want to be aware of what food recalls are currently happening. This is a great website that actually combines several other websites in order to keep you up to date on food recalls. It's very, active, very important to be active. You definitely want to check with your medical team to see how much activity you can do. If you haven't been very active, you may want to try just 10 or 15 minute intervals a couple times a day. And we certainly have programs that can help you like the Live Strong program, Gentle Yoga, the Renew program, and basic walking outdoors if the weather is nice or indoors if you can find a safe place to do that. The benefit of physical activity is that it helps maintain muscles, helps manage constipation, increases appetite, improves immune function, and generally people overall feel better when they have some activity in their day. In summary, we need for you to have an adequate intake of calories, protein, and fluids but aim to get your nutrients from a variety of foods, focused on the, the healthiest foods that you can tolerate, follow food safety guidelines, be active with some light physical activity, and seek help from your medical team or your oncology dietitian if you're not able to eat well. Once again, you can schedule a free nutrition consultation 
by calling the Pluta Integrative Oncology Center or the Wilmot Cancer Center.